good morning to you all and thank you all for joining us for the second Sunday of Advent, which is peace. Um, we're so glad that you have joined us and we are filming from the United Methodist Church and my name is Pastor Debbie and what a blessing it is to be part of the Trinity worship where we can bring worship to wherever you are at, but know once again that you are loved that God desires that relationship with you that is true, real, and personal. Um, it's a personal relationship that we have with him that never, never fails, um, never, a God that never leaves nor forsakes. So um, announcements, today is the United Methodist Church Turkey Dinner. It is at 12, everybody is welcome. Um, I'm not too sure. On December 20th, mm -hmm. is that right, for the Blue Christmas at the Good Shepherd yep. Lutheran Church at 6 o'clock? All are welcome for that to come and, and, then and to be part of that. Eve services. We should probably get those times. Our Christmas Eve we services, <laughs> we can share that maybe later. We're kind of working on that. Um, oh, okay. Well, ours is up our. Our, we're working on that because if you haven't um, heard, Barnes United Methodist Church is closing the doors. The last service that they want will be on Christmas Eve. So I have invited Washington Church to go to Barnes and we're going to have a combined Christmas services and I believe it is going to be at 5 o'clock. If that changes, I think we have a couple more Sundays before we can announce all that. Um, but, um, but we, you know, you all are welcome to come. This will be the last worship service, the last service in the church on December 24th at five o'clock, I believe. Like I said, be flexible, it may change, but I believe, and we're just gonna have a combining Christmas service so we can go and celebrate the birth of Christ and also be there to just be present to them because it is a time, it's a season that they're going through with, you know, the, the church building will be there. They will be there because they are the light of Christ. So, and but Christ's just be. Christ's resurrection will be there. Huh? Christ's resurrection will be there. In yeah, some yeah, way. yeah, yeah. So anyway, yeah, Christmas Eve services are coming up and yours will be 6 p.m. on Christmas Eve at the church. Okay. Is there any other announcements, or can we begin with? We can uh, start with worship. We can start with worship. So let's go ahead and take a breath and inhale and exhale the Spirit of God, which we know that is always present in our lives, and let us sing, O Come, e o come Emmanuel. Choosing grace over hate and opening the door for each other. 
There are a million ways to practice peace. So today we light the candle of peace as a reminder and a charge. With God's help, may we bring peace into a weary world. Amen. Family of Faith, one of the greatest joys of worship is that it is not a solo act. We gather together. We find joy and God in the act of connection. So as I be, we begin our worship, I invite you to turn to someone you are close to so that you can see one another. Now repeat the phrases after me. Welcome to worship. Welcome, Welcome to, to worship. worship. I'm glad you're here. I am glad you're here. Surely God is in this space. Surely God is in this space. I see God in your face. I see, I see God, God in your face. Let us worship together. Let, Let us, us worship, worship together. together. Our confession and forgiveness. God of laughter, God of open front doors and family reunions, we confess that we often doubt good news. We move through this world waiting for the other shoe to drop, waiting for life to fall apart, waiting for our humanity to get the best of us. Instead of leaning into joy, we lean into scarcity. We, we lean, lean into fear. We, we lean into isolation. Forgive us, forgetting that joy is amplified when shared. Heal, Heal the wounds we have from past hurts and, and teach us how to open, open our doors like Elizabeth. Show us how to find joy in connection. Amen. Amen. Faith family. I imagine that when we come before God with the truth of our lives, God meets us like Elizabeth meets Mary in our scripture today. The door is thrown open. There is laughter, there is joy, there is embracing, and it is holy. So trust this and believe this. You are claimed, you are loved, you are forgiven, and you are sent to serve. Find joy in that. Amen. Amen. Our text today comes from Luke chapter 1, verses 24 through 45. The birth of Jesus is foretold. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month for her who has said to be barren for nothing will be impossible with God. <clears throat> then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed, departed from her. Mary visits Elizabeth. In those days, Mary set out and went haste to the Judean town to the hill country, where he, she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a cloud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why this has happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me. For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, a child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Okay, I just want to point out, Mary says, how can this be? And she doesn't go mute. Well, <laughs> I, I, I know. I knew that was coming. <laughs> there is such contrast in this text. There is. You know, Mary, instead of, 
you know, Zachariah said, I don't believe this. How can this be? You know, I mean, no. Well, you, you get the sense that he word vomited. Yeah, he did. <laughs> <laughs> he just did. She's asking for clarity. Yeah, there's this word in there that yeah. says Mary Ponder. Mary Ponder. And she's yeah. asking for clarity. And the clarity is, wait a second, I'm a virgin. How does this happen? Yeah. You know, and so she's asking for clarity. He just full on doubted. I also this. just think what they need is different. Because Zechariah, Mary doesn't carry the weariness that Zechariah would have carried from last month. And so what they need from God is different. Mm -hmm. So there's a little bit to be said about sometimes what we need from God is different. She's young, unmarried, they're old, married, barren. Yeah, you know, their stories are different. They're completely, there's different such stories. a contrast between the two of them. Yeah. You know, he went to, the angel went to Zechariah, the angel Gabriel went to Zechariah, who's an old man, and mm -hmm. this time it's a young woman. Right. I mean, it, right. they're just such contrasts. So what I love about this series of how do the weary world rejoice is it made me ask in the text, where's the weariness in this text? And I don't see it in Mary. I see it in Elizabeth, mm -hmm. who has mm -hmm. hidden herself away. Mm -hmm. And she has been six months in seclusion. Because nobody will doubt this now that right. she's pregnant. Well, she's and showing. And that, I don't even know why yeah. she would hide it, except that maybe because she's older, so people would... I don't know what I, think, I don't I know what the would, stigma I, is that they would feel, or maybe because she's it's ashamed. A question. Yeah, I mean the you know maybe she just needs to ponder. Maybe because her husband is is silent that she's decided to choose silence with mm -hmm. him. I don't know, but there's this sense that somehow or another, her predicament draws her away from people, and Mary's predicament sends her to people. Hmm. And there's this, this contrast between their responses that I think is beautiful. So a lot of times we read the story, we, we celebrate that Elizabeth gave this young woman who was scared sanctuary. But I wonder sometimes if Mary coming to Elizabeth drew Elizabeth out of her seclusion and connected her. And so then how a weary world rejoices, one of the ways we rejoice is find the places where we connect. Mm -hmm. When we Maybe seclude so ourselves, it's a, it's a problem. Yeah. But when we connect to others, it makes a difference. Yeah, I mean, Mary surrendered to God's plan. I mean, but she connected even to though God. Gabriel said, do not be afraid once again. Yes. I mean, there it is again. There it is again. Well, yeah, that it was that scary angel. Thing. <laughs> I mean, here we go. Same angel. Like, here we go. Do not be afraid. And Mary, you know, she wasn't. And it's, you know... That faithfulness and um, you're right that's answering prayers, but also surrendering to God's plan. This is God's plan that this is going to happen, and the communal blessings that come with the presence of Christ. Yeah. I think also the yeah. community with Mary and Elizabeth, and and Mary knew what was happening, and 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 Elizabeth, you know. They leap for joy, you know. They had that. They were both. Once again, this is peace. With like, oh, okay. Yeah, like we should not be afraid. Like Mary wasn't afraid. I, I mean, I think she was in some ways, but it didn't say that she yeah. she was like no, Zechariah there's, and went. There's this like, whatever, beautiful but it's testament beautiful, of faith mm -hmm. in in verse thirty eight. Here I here am I. The servant of the Lord, let it be with me according to your word. What a beautiful testament of faith. You know, it wasn't Zachariah going, hey, how can this be? Well, she's you like know. a 13, 14 year old girl. This is not yeah. a grown woman mature in her faith. This is a woman who um, has been determined. We, we're not sure how young, but she would have been young. Because mm. um, she doesn't have children yet. She, doesn't, she isn't fully married yet. She's engaged, which is a step towards marriage mm -hmm. and an intense one in this culture, but she's not, yeah. The other- There's faith and humility and obedience. There's faith and exactly. humility and obedience. Yeah. Exactly. Like, to yeah. be obedient to, okay. Exactly. You know, yeah. even though, you know, yeah. I mean, I'm sure there was some uncertainty it didn't say, but it's like, oh, okay, right. I need to be obedient. Right. I need to, I come humbly. I come humbly and I, 
as a testament of faith. I, I think sometimes too that we make so much of this portion of the text <coughs> about John leaping in the womb yeah. of Elizabeth. You know, we make such a big deal about mm -hmm. that. And we miss all those other parts mm -hmm. about the deep abiding faith, testament of faith of Mary. And Elizabeth. And Elizabeth both. Yeah. And, and they, and they come together another. to share that faith. Yes. So I think there's something really beautiful and something really important to remember in this sharing of faith. Because how many times as pastors have we been told, I don't need people to have faith in Christ. And we're like, well, yes, but... You know, like Elizabeth could have stayed in seclusion and she would have had beautiful faith. But this story says there's more to, to your faith. Mm -hmm to be had in community. Um, and actually, there's a Harvard study that has been going on since 1939 that as I was researching this, I discovered. Uh, started with 268 young sophomore men at Harvard. Um, one of them was Kennedy, President Kennedy. Really? And they started to track the men over their lives as to what, is, what their life is, and the goal was to see what leads to a long, happy, joy-filled life. And then they also chose a number of young men in Boston in the tenements, so underprivileged um, kids, and they've been tracking them, uh, 700 plus. They've tracked them since 1939. And they've begun to track their spouses and they've begun to track their children as well. So it's the longest running study at this point, what is that, um, 70 plus years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> longest running study, ongoing study, has had four directors. When they go through the research, following these young men in college and then following their children from birth to adulthood, they find that it's not your cholesterol levels, it's not your genetics, it's not any of that that determines long life. Longevity of life is determined by the quality of relationships you hold. Mm -hmm. That people who are in quality building relationships and connected to one another. Experience more joy and satisfaction and longer lives. I, I could believe that, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because we are not to be on this journey alone. No. We're, we're not to meant be, to live. We're not meant to be right. alone. Right. So the things that we've been yeah. saying are scientifically backed up by this study. <laughs> I just want to like clarify. The things that we say right. and see in scripture the things in scripture are scientifically backed up in our studies. The things about the Ruth story, the, the creation of another being in the garden, all of those places where we've said relationship matters to yeah, God. There was and the a child leaped in her womb because right. she shared and they were together. Right. And right. And so we see that play out again in this story. The and encouragement. So and how the does a weary world rejoice? Together. Together.
carry us through our days. You know every word on our tongue, every hair on our head. You know the dreams in our hearts and the weight of our bones. You also know the weariness we bring with us into the morning and into this space. So with honesty, we come before you both with hearts full of gratitude and with prayer requests on our lips. First, Holy God, we thank you for the gifts of this life that give energy for birthday candles and sunrises, for handwritten cards and jobs that we are passionate about, for stories that can make us laugh until we cry, and for friends that feel like family. For all these gifts, thank you. In addition to these prayers of gratitude, loving God, we also bring you the things that weigh heavy on our hearts. For gun violence, for family and friends and chemotherapy, for seasons of transition and grief that won't let us go. We ask for your attention. We ask for your love and care. Take this yoke from us and relieve some of the burden on our backs and wrap your arms around the places where we feel most tender. As we enter into this new Advent season, a season marked with joy, hope, and light, we ask that you would remind us that our full humanity is welcomed here. There is room for both joy and grief. There is room for weariness and awe. There is room for faith and doubt, for nothing is too big or too far gone for your love to reach it. So with hope in our hearts, we unite our voice once more to pray the words your son taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive our debt who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
We give in grateful thanksgiving for all that God has given us. In the upside down world of the gospel, we measure our wealth, not by what we have, but what we can give away. Let us give away generously in this offering to bless your church, your people, your creation. Amen. Amen. And now receive this benediction. Family of faith, as you leave this place, you go into a weary world. So speak tenderly. Do the good that is yours to do. Choose connection. Hold on to hope. And remember that Christ took on flesh for you. You are God's beloved. So go rejoicing. The world needs it. Amen. Amen. Thank you.